We've all heard that old wives' tale about keeping the sun behind you when you're photographing so that it's lighting up whatever it is that your camera is looking at. But there's no reason why you should always do that. In fact, some of the most impressive, interesting pictures you could ever see are taken against the light, shooting into the sun. Let's have a quick look at it. If I move around here, take my glasses off, now the sun is pretty much behind me. And Janie is sort of shooting against the light. But if she changes the exposure a bit for my face, the shadows that were there a moment ago have disappeared and I'm in much more even light. Okay, the background's possibly gone a bit brighter, but there's no reason why you can't shoot into the light. If your camera's up high, you get a different sort of a, an angle and perspective and background. Why does it look good? In all of these pictures, notice that the shadows are coming towards the camera. That's because the light is behind the subject, regardless of what it is. In some of these pictures, you can see the sun in shot. The sun with the beach hut here. The only thing that really makes this picture interesting, because let's face it, it's a very simple image, is the sun and the highlight of light on the timbers. So why is it that this works so well? What is it about putting the light behind the subject that makes it sort of work so well? Let me just, I'm going to try and dump my sunny somewhere. I'll put them on my bag. <clears throat> Look at these ropes here again. There's all sorts of interesting textures and stuff, isn't there, within a rope. Now, right now, the light is pretty much over my shoulder. So if I just take a picture, I'm just going to shoot across the edge of these ropes here so that you can compare something. Right. There's a shot going that way. Now, if I go the other side and I just take the same picture, but going in that direction, you look and see what a difference there is to the ropes. Now I know the background is going to be very, very slightly different, but look how much more texture there is. Why is there more texture? Why do the ropes look more ropey? Well, come and have a look. If you go, Jenny, go that side with the camera for a moment, right? If you just look at these ropes from where you are over there, the light's coming this way, and so there are no shadows. All the little hollows and nooks and crannies in the rope, they're all filled in. If you come around this side, and I'll do a little pirouette the other way. Now, when you look at those ropes, the light is coming from this direction. So there are little shadows forming on this side and those little shadows and the little nooks and valleys created by the weave of the rope, they're giving it a texture. They're giving it a shape, which makes it much more interesting. Let's go and have a little look for a picture. Over here, we've got some flags. Come on, Jenny, let's go and have a go at these flags. Now, we can approach these in lots of ways. I've photographed these flags a few times, actually, because I think they're quite interesting. Let's take one going this way. So I'm working with the sun. The sun's over here. And I'm going to photograph those flags in this direction. Let's see what we've got. I'm using a wide lens. Let's just get down here somewhere, because I don't want the car, the van in the shot. not a bad picture. We've got some nice blue sky going on with the red flags. There's not much drama, is there? So if I go and stand the other side and put the sun right behind these little flagpoles. Oh, oh, there's about to be a nautical collision by the look of it. Whoa, that was close. Someone in a sailboat. He hasn't even acknowledged the fact. Never mind. Sorry, I got sidetracked. They just about missed needing the lifeboat. When I come around this side and put the sun directly behind the flags and take a similar picture. Now I'm gonna put the actual sun itself right behind the little pole that the flag is mounted on. So I don't want it coming straight into my lens, but I'm just gonna hide it behind one of those little poles. Let me see if I can line that up properly. There we go, get it in focus. Wait for the breeze to flap a flag nicely. One more for luck. There we go. I think you'll agree that is much more dramatic because the light is coming along the flag. It's giving it a shape and a texture. By putting the sun immediately behind this little thin pole, the sun isn't going straight up the lens, but it's sort of bursting out from the middle and it's giving it a whole load of interest and, 
and kind of drama, I suppose, is the word. Now, we've looked at a couple of little examples where you can use this on very, very small details. When I was here having a wander around, waiting for Janie to arrive with the film camera, they did have to launch the lifeboat. That's why I was kind of interested in that. And as they launched it, I shot these pictures. As you can see, the light is behind the lifeboat. It's coming towards me. But I think it looks really rather dramatic. It looks quite exciting. So you can use this sort of backlighting shooting against the light technique, not only for smaller details, but you can shoot it in a landscape as well because it'll bring out textures in the countryside, little hillocks and all the rest of it.